What's up, best friends? It is Brian Deach, and today we're gonna to talk about Risk 360. You might be asking yourself, what the heck is that? It is a cyber risk quantification engine or platform. Now, before I jump into exactly the specifics on that, you might be thinking, well, Zisco, you're a proxy. How can you possibly play in this game? Let me outline it for you. So let's have a little conversation about where your users, your applications, all exist. So maybe you have some platform as a service, infrastructure as a service over here. Put a little S on there. And it's your usual suspects, the uh, AWS of the world, GCP, and Azure. It could be more than that, but we'll leave it right there. And you have applications that live over here. We'll call them applications one, two, and three. But also, this is really where your, your enterprise data could exist. And that's kind of paramount when looking at risk. Shifting gears, you also are adopting SaaS-based applications as well. And those are your usual suspects, great partners, M365 of the world, Salesforce.com, and ServiceNow. But at the end of the day, again, this is where your enterprise data could exist. Where else should your data be? Well, that's kind of simple over here at the data center. Now, whether you have one data center, two data centers, trying to get out of the data center game, not that big of a deal. And at the data center, you're gonna have applications that live over here as well. Applications, I don't know, X, Y, and Z, but critically here, this is where your data is. And you have to think, you know, holistically when evaluating risk, how do you kind of segment that? Where's one location in which your data probably shouldn't go. That's the obvious one. Be the internet. Maybe your uh, employees are going out to AOL, checking their uh, their email. Maybe going out to nefarious websites like BrianDeach.com. And then we have to think about where are your users at, where are your workloads at, and that's kind of simple. You probably have some branch offices, warehouse, factories, clinics, all that good stuff. So we'll come over here and say we got a branch. But we also have users over here. Maybe you're doing some type of fancy segmentation. Maybe you have some OT networks, IoT as well, guest Wi Fi. Then, of course, your users aren't always at the branch or a known location. They can be kind of working from anywhere. And that's at home, Starbucks, and abroad. And of course, we can't forget about the last little piece of the puzzle, and that's the third parties that are coming in, partners, contractors that you might have in your environment. So we'll just come over here and say third party. And really what Risk360 is about is you know trying to reduce the pressure in your teams, right? Uh, better board um, reporting, streamline compliance, and ultimately just reducing risk. And so Zscaler is the glue that kind of puts that all together. So we'll come over here, draw the Zscar cloud, and we'll just refer to that as the zero trust exchange, kind of keep a high level. And the narrative is simple. And the reason why we can help quantify risk is that all roads kind of point to Zscar. For your users that are off the network, their traffic's coming through the Zscar zero trust exchange. Maybe you're doing some Zero Trust SD-WAN over here at your branch and your factories. And again, that traffic's coming over here. The underlying narrative when going out to the internet or SaaS is to allow the good, block the bad, and stop the stupid. And then for your internal applications, we don't do silly things like VPN, right? We do an inside out connection here. We have our little connectors that reach outbound to the Zero Trust Exchange, have that application adjacency to your enterprise applications and your data. Same thing over here. And of course, we're not gonna forget about the third parties that are in here. They too are gonna to go through the Zero Trust Exchange. So as we look at this, one thing becomes abundantly clear. If I'm kinda of like that default gateway, I become a very strategic point of control. 
And then they also become a very strategic point of visibility. And the biggest reason there is that not only do I see all of your flows, your users, your contractors, your remote locations, and your data centers, but I also am doing the TLS inspection to give these more visibility. Now, if we think about the other risk players and how they do it, right? They just kind of have like a third party thing and they're just doing outside in. They're scanning your perimeter, they're doing domain-based analysis and the kind of the buck stops right there. And then you have to kind of integrate other products and other feeds in there to get a better view. And so Zscaler looks at this a little bit different because we are sitting in line. When we do this, we're able to produce what we call an organization risk score. And it's based off of these four pillars. One is your external attack surface. Two, the ability to evaluate compromise. So that's like looking at your policy. Are you doing SSL inspection? Are you scanning for botnets? Are you blocking malware? In addition to that, we're looking for lateral propagation, which means can your users talk to every single application or is it kind of narrowed down to just the applications they need to be able to talk to? And last but not least, what kind of data protection are you doing? Now we're going to take this scoring, we're going to evaluate it over time. So looking at this risk score trend, you can see exactly where you're at for the last six months, last couple of months. Obviously, you want this score to be trending down. And what's nice about this is you can compare yourself against the industry peer average score as well. And if you're like me, you're probably hyper competitive and you want to make sure that you're below that curve and you're looking better. However, even though Zscaler does a ton of stuff inline, we also do things out of band. And let's kind of denote that here as a dotted line, which means I can come over here into both SaaS, platform as a service, private cloud, infrastructure as a service, and do API-based scans here as well and get us increased visibility. Now we're going to take this information, we're going to pull data from external decoys, we're doing our external scans, we're looking at top level domains, we're looking at subdomains, we're taking the IP addresses of the host, we're doing a reverse DNS on that, we're looking at your ASNs, we're looking for CVEs, and evaluating TLS versioning as well. Now, the way that we evaluate this is we're looking at factors. There are about 100 granular factors that map to these four stages. Everything that we do is a factor-based model. Each factor has its own data pipeline, heuristic, and weighted score, all backed by real data. This is your data, not some fake stuff that's out there. Since we are in line and in inspecting all things, not only do we see the threats, we block them, we can look at the internal segmentation and find out who has access to what. Leveraging out-of-band SSPM, we can see stuff like fail logins, bulk uploads, bulk downloads into your SaaS-based applications like M365, Salesforce.com. We have the ability to weed out the anonymous behavior, score it, and assign risk. Now, once we have assigned risk, we have the ability to map this to a financial risk. So we look at these things and we tie it over here. One of my favorite things about this platform is I'm not trying to boil the ocean. As you can see, if your financial exposure is 10.35 million, it would probably be great to get rid of all of that. And with our platform, we're looking at this particular scenario, we can reduce that by 4.1 million. And right now I'm picking on some stuff like VPN usage, posture profiles, DLP, and risky cloud applications. Now we have the ability to showcase what we're finding and give you some reporting, whether it's an SCC disclosure, cybersecurity maturity assessment, attack surface reports. These are things you can hand off to your team so that way they can take action on it. But most importantly, we have CISO board level slides ready to take to the board and have great conversations. And what does that really mean? You can track stuff over time and you can present this to the board like saying, hey, our risk score is a 27. We want to get that down to a one. Right, 100 would be terrible. Our average uh, against our peers is a 51, so we're doing pretty well. And then it goes into the scoring. And what's nice about this is it shows it trending over time. So as you're having those meetings with the board, it makes it easier to present this. You're not mucking around in our UI, trying to find this information. And again, this is real data. This is your data, not some fabricated stuff. But now we're gonna take this, because that's great, but our score has gone down. What does that really mean? We take that information 
and we put this into our top findings. If our score is a 27 and we're trying to get it down as low as possible, what are the top things we should put our time, focus, and energy into? So right here would be like an external attack surface. We have a VPN. Maybe it's time to retire that VPN. Compromise, lateral propagation, and data loss. Let's find those risky applications. Let's minimize that. And again, that's one thing to look at, but let's prioritize a little bit more. And so now we're going to take this, the four stages that we look at, the top five factors in the financial exposure. If you do this, if you get rid of that external attack surface, that VPN there, you should be able to prevent a lot of that lateral propagation. If you can drive down that risk, you drive down that financial exposure as well. And ultimately what you're left with is the strategic point of visibility that helps you quantify that cyber risk that's out there, figure out where in this equation you need to focus your time and effort, and more importantly, the cost savings that are associated with it. So with all that said, that's my time. That is Risk360. My name is Brian Keach. Do me a favor, subscribe if you haven't already, like this video and leave a comment. Thank you for your time. Thank <laughs> you.